this evening. It's time of Bible study. Amen. Um, let us go before the throne in prayer. Amen. Just now. Most gracious Heavenly Father. Lord God, we come before you, God. Thy heads bowed and our hearts bowed to you, Lord God. Asking you, O oh Father God, as we approach, Lord God, this time, O oh Father God, of studying. Lord, as we look through your word, O oh Father God, we know, Lord, that any man can open the pages of this Bible, O oh Lord God, but it takes you, O oh Father God, to give revelation, O oh Lord. Lord God, we ask you, O oh Father, that you anoint these scriptures, anoint these words. O oh Lord God, may you take me, Father, and hide me behind the cross. Lord God, that your word is the only thing that penetrates, O oh Father. Lord God, we ask you, O oh Lord God, in this hour, Lord God, to touch those, O oh Father God, that need a touch from you, O oh Lord God, as Lord God, we're still, O oh Father God, in uh, <clears throat> sort of an altered state, Lord God, and we're streaming this evening, O oh Lord God. I ask you, O oh Father God, to give a special anointing to those, O oh Father God, that might be tuning in, O oh Lord God. May they hear from you, Lord. May they hear your voice, O oh Father God, through these words, O oh Lord God. We ask these blessings in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing and an honor to be before you once again. This evening, I ask for you to uh, lift, keep me lifted up in prayer. Amen. That, um, amen. That uh, God would be able to use this yielded vessel. Amen. For his will and his glory. Amen. It's my humble desire that all glory goes to him. Uh, I am truly uh, nothing before you. I'm no great man, no great preacher, amen, but uh, I just come to do what the Lord has laid upon my heart, amen. As we um, begin to get into the word, kind of picking up from where I was at last week, and just going a little further in that, um, I like to title this, if I may, the spirit of obedience for the third exodus. The spirit of obedience for the third exodus. Amen. If we grab our Bibles, we'll go straight to the Word. I'd like to read, amen, a passage of Scripture here starting with Joel chapter 2. Amen. Joel chapter 2 will begin reading from the uh, 25th, the 25th verse. Amen. And we'll kind of go over um, into Revelation 4, amen, and then uh, we'll just go from there. Amen. Beginning at Joel chapter 2, 25, it says, uh, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God. And he hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be, be ashamed. So God is here saying that he is going to restore, amen, the years amen, that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. And we understand that these, 
this insect <clears throat> is just described as the same insect, amen, revealing itself in four different stages. Amen. Let us go to Revelation 4 and the seventh, the seventh chapter. I'm sorry, the, uh, the fourth chapter in the seventh verse. Revelation, the fourth chapter in the seventh, the seventh verse. Amen. In the fourth chapter, in the seventh verse, and it says, And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Now we see that these four, this four stage insect here, and uh, that he's talking about that. That that uh God said He will restore the years that it has eaten, Amen. And then we see here in in, in Revelation that these um uh, uh uh what they are are anointings. The first beast was like a lion. The second beast, like a calf, and uh the third beast has that the face of a man, and that's very significant. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. These are the anointings for each age or for that time that God has to combat the spirit, amen, of these insects, amen. So in other words, these anointing, amen, that is, that is released upon the earth in these, in these four beasts, Amen. It's, it's, it's sort of this insect. My, my father was a, 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 a great gardener. And, and, and we know that gardeners sometimes, the, uh, 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 they, they use insecticide. Now, my father got away from insecticide, and he learned certain tricks and different things to keep bugs and things off of his, uh, 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 what he's planted by what he plant next to it. Amen. So, uh, but, 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 but these anointings, amen, is, is sort of works as an insecticide, amen, to these, uh, 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 this insect, amen, as it, it, is, it, is, it is released in the land, amen, to combat, amen, what God is doing. Amen. I re last week, I kind of likened this, the, 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 the building of a temple. Amen. Taking this, taking the the word from from as Solomon built the temple, dedicated it was, it was it was a temple, but the in in the Old Testament as a natural type, but the spiritual type was that the temple was a body. Read in Hebrews, he said that a body thou shalt prepare. So the temple, Amen. This tree. Amen. That 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 is speaking of that these locusts is eating that these locusts is trying to destroy is amen the 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 kingdom of God, amen. Uh, we we understand that this that that when we when we speak of these things we speak of these things, amen. Uh, in 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 a uh, in a broad matter. Let me explain what I'm saying. We know that in Genesis is the seed chapter. So we understand that revelation is the harvest. So that what happened in, in, in Genesis, it is just multiplied in revelation. It is the, 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 the revelation is Genesis in simple form multiplied. Amen. So we see in, in, in Genesis that, 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 that there was a, 
woman by the name of Eve that was deceived. And then when we come over into Genesis, into Revelation here, we see that there is a woman, amen, that it will be deceived, amen, once again, amen, but this is not just a one woman, it's many, amen, that makes up a, 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 a body, makes up an entity, the church, amen, amen. So we'll, we'll, we don't want to go too far into that. We're going to get into that a little later, amen. So, but revelation here, these four beasts, these different natures released as an anointing, on the people of God to overcome the enemy of their age. So this flying eagle is the anointing that has been released upon the elect in this age that enables us, amen, to fly above the thinking and the understanding of the false church in this age. Amen. That enables us to, 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 to rise above, amen, that level of thinking, amen, through a prophetic vision. We understand that in the scripture, a prophet, amen, is always likened unto an eagle. A prophet, amen, another word is a seer, amen, and up under a prophetic anointing, which is an eagle anointing, amen, you're able to rise above a little higher and able to see afar off, amen. You're able to, the higher you go, I believe Sunday, uh, Brother Kwaku sort of hit this, he, uh, uh, the, the higher you go, Amen. The, the, the eagle has a unique ability that his vision, amen, is he's, he's an ordained bird. He's a special built bird. Amen. By God, that the higher he goes, the keener his vision gets. Amen. If you notice sometime when you go up higher, amen, the higher you go, the greater your perspective. Amen. There's an old saying that sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Why? Because you're, you're, you're right there among them. But if you can ever get lifted up, amen, and above the entire thing, you can see, oh, wow, now I got a better perspective of what's really happening. Amen. And that's what that eagle anointing does. It gives us, amen, the right perspective, amen, that we can see, amen, what the tricks of the enemy we can see, amen, what the devil is doing, amen. We can see, amen, what God is doing, amen. So Revelation 3, amen, uh, 18, amen, Revelation 3, 18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, Tried in the fire. Now, now, it's cold outside, but it ain't all that cold in here. I'm going to have to take this jacket off. Amen. I counsel thee to buy of me. Now, 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 who counsels? I counsel. So the, the counsel, the one doing the counseling here, amen, is the Lord. He is the one doing the counsel, amen, and he is the one that you must buy of him gold that is tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with an eye salve that thou mayest see. Again, here we see the emphasis is on this age, the importance of being able to see. The Bible teaches us that uh, 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 the seeing, and, and, and we'll, 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 we'll kind of back that up by the scripture, to see, amen, 
is a revelation. It means to understand, to have an understanding. Now, 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 if if a person, a man was was literally naturally blind, a man, uh, uh, they have a a a, a, a diminished level of understanding of where they may be or what's in front of them, amen, or what's going on around them, amen, because they really can't see, amen. But so, 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 so being able to see, amen, like I said, give you a perspective of what is happening around you. So we take this, this uh, natural ability and we magnify it into the spirit world, into a spirit realm to be able to see, amen, what, uh, what, what the Satan is doing in this hour that he has been doing to understand the tricks over thousands of years and even thousands of years ahead. Amen. We see that, amen, that this is what Jesus said, I'll build my church on a revelation and the gates of hell shall not, amen, prevail against it. So the counsel given by God is here that our spiritual eyesight must be sharp and clear in this age. And so we realize that this is the most deceitful age, deceitful. I say we realize it, but I, I imagine some people just really don't realize it. Amen. Uh, it is the most deceiving age. The serpent beguiled Eve. The word beguiled means that he tricked her or seduced her into his thinking by how false teaching. And when this happened, amen, a seed was planted into the womb of her mind, into her thinking that caused her to disobey the word of God. We're going to get into that a little further later. Let me stay with my notes. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So we see that the eyesight of this age, by sending us the ISAF in the form of the teaching of the word by an end time vindicated prophet, is that eagle anointing. Spoke about there in Revelation. Amen. So we see this, why we must apply this ointment of the revealed word of the message of the hour to our eyesight of our standing or we will be walking around blind in this age like everyone else. Amen. So we see in Genesis you have one woman Eve who was deceived. In Revelation, you have a whole world who is deceived by the same thing, but in a multiplied form. As I said earlier, Genesis is the seed form of the same thing in Revelation in a harvest form. Amen. So we see here that the reason... I'm sorry. In 1963, let's go to uh, 6303.22, the fifth seal. I'd like to read from that. 6303.22, the fifth seal. Now, while she's getting that, the church goes up in a sense. 
That is actually the start of the rapture. I made a statement last week that we are potentially in the resurrection. A resurrection is someone coming back from the dead. A resurrection is something that uh, uh, is being raised from, from the dead. We see that the resurrection, the most notable Christ being resurrected, amen, after, amen, Calvary. Amen, that was another resurrection. Amen, where he called Lazarus from the grave. Lazarus was resurrected from the grave. Amen. Another form of resurrection, amen, is when you who are dead in sin and trespasses, amen, dead, amen, in your sins, amen, resurrected to a, a newness of life, amen, by the revelation of the word, by an acceptance, amen, of Calvary, amen. If this same spirit, the Bible says, that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will also quicken your mortal body, quicken your mortal body, Amen. So we, 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 we realize that our bodies have to be quickened. Amen. Quickened means that it has, ha, has, has to be ignited. Amen. Amen. By the revelation of the word to receive a body change. What quickens? The Holy Spirit. We're going to get a little deeper into that, but what actually does it Amen. Is the revealed truth, that eagle anointing, amen, that is giving us a greater understanding of truth in this hour, amen, that takes us to a higher level in Christ Jesus, who are seated with him in heavenly places, amen, as he is resurrected, we become our level of thinking, our level of understanding has risen from old dead denominational creeds, amen, to a understanding, a revelation of who we are in this hour, amen, exactly where we're at in this hour, what's going on in this hour, amen, a revelation of who we are, amen, that very words, Amen. That very understanding, that revelation is the actual that gives us that quickening power. Amen. That literally begins to change. Amen. We are being changed right now from glory to glory. A lot of people are misunderstood. Amen. By uh, <coughs> a lack of understanding that is that 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 we will be uh 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 we will receive a body change amen but before there's going to be a literal body change there must be a change amen in our thinking there must be a change in our attitude there must be a change amen in our walk We'll get into that a little bit. What is our walk? Amen. The Bible says that how can two walk except they agree? Amen. To be in agreement, amen, with someone is to be in fellowship. To be in fellowship. Amen. Let us move on. So, we see here, if you have the quote there in, in the fifth seal, 87, paragraph 87, I'm sorry. But the reason that he reveals, the reason that he reveals it, he says, as I understand it, that it is because the mystery of the book.
book of redemption, as far as the Antichrist being revealed, and at the time, the church is gone, and these things don't even happen in the church age at all. That's right. They're away from the church age. The church absolutely is raptured at this time. He's talking about, uh, uh, thank you, my brother. He's talking about here between Revelation 4 and Revelation 19. <laughs> Amen. Church absolutely raptured at this time. The church goes up in the fourth chapter of Revelation and does not return till it comes back with its king in the 19th chapter. This is the fifth seal now. Mm. But these seals here are revealing what has been what is and what will be. See? And now, what was to be for the church this age was revealed by these seals. Now watch what takes it. So in a sense, as I said, the church is actually in the rapture, because this is what has began to elevate her level of thinking, amen, to have the faith. Now, let, me, let, let, me, let me move on. Let me, let me read on. The voice of the message of the hour. In other words, you must first be caught up into the revelation of the word that will mature you into rapturing faith. It will mature you into rapturing faith. Before you can physically change and caught up in a physical rapture at the last trump, that is why the shout is the first part of the rapture. It is to get your attention. Process because without the message, there can be no faith released for a rapture to take place. Amen. Remember, Noah was in preparation for 120 years before he physically taken up above judgment in the ship. Just as we have also been in preparation under a prophet's message for many years. So if, so, 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 so if we are caught up in the fourth chapter of Revelation and return don't return until the 19th chapter, then everything between the 4th chapter and the 19th chapter is a revelation being revealed to the bride right now. Amen. What has been happening since we have been gathered up higher into this eagle message? I made a statement last week that it's gathering time. We are to be gathered. Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 18th verse. Matthew, the 24th chapter, and the 18th verse. Says, amen. I'm sorry, 24, 28.
the 28th Amen. It says, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, see, we're talking about here an eagle anointing. Amen. And, 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 and if you're up under the anointing of that eagle, that eagle, amen. At feeding time, they're gathered together. One of the things that I noticed, amen, that in this time, we're talking about those four stage insect. And I made the statement about how that insect eats away at the bright tree. What is it? God said in Joel that he's going to restore it. But at the time of the harvest, here comes an invasion of locusts to eat away at what God has been restoring. What God has been restoring. So we see in this hour that there's a great spirit that is being released Amen. Upon the earth, that it, uh, 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 upon the people to cause, amen, a separation, amen, to cause turmoil. We see that they're threatening to close the churches. We see that, amen, as, as a result of what we have right now. This is that locust that is trying to break the fellowship by this chewing locust that is eating the leaves of the tree. The leaves of the tree is the fellowship of the people. Now, I'm not talking about just getting together and lollygagging. I'm talking about the bride of Jesus Christ coming together to worship. Amen. We talking about, amen, the, the, the rustling in the mulberry tree. That when the, when, the, when the wind begins to blow through the leaves of the mulberry tree, say, what's that? That's the people worshiping God. The tree is in a revival. So what is that? That's a spirit released in this time. Amen. In abundance to divide. I said last week, dividing families, dividing co-workers. Friends don't even speak to each other no more. I hear so many uh, 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 say, well, now you know what your, who your real friends are because of a politics. That is the locust being released from the bottomless pit upon the people in this hour. Amen. <coughs> yes, Luke 17. Luke 17. First chapter um, I have here. And I was hoping to get through this today. Amen. Amen. I think I might have. Nope. I'm sorry. 1737. Luke 1737. I was going to really go into that a little deeper, but for the sake of time, I won't. But I want to read this scripture here. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever 
the body is thither where the eagles be gathered together. Amen. The eagles will be gathered together. So we see again here, at this last day, there is a gathering. There is a gathering, amen, and not just a physical gathering, amen, but there is a fellowship of common thinking. There is a, a union, a binding, amen, of, 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 of a binding of love around the scripture. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together except they agree? Walking together has to do with fellowship. Amen. As you walk with God, and I walk with God. We're both walking with God. We are in fellowship with him. So what does that do for us? That binds us even closer together. Amen. Understanding that we are a bride making herself ready for a husband. There is a invisible union going on. A union, amen, with Jesus Christ and a union of a body, amen, of believers, amen, for a rapture. There is a gathering. There is a binding going on. Amen. But we see the spirit of this time is trying to come against that. But we will get into that a little bit more as we go along. Please go to the, uh, well, I'll just read this because it'll probably be a little bit tough to go to. The Lady O.C. in Church Age, 327. Now this messenger of Malachi 4, Revelation 10, 7, is going to do two things. According to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. One. Two. He will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelation 10, which are the revelations contained in the seven seals. It will be divinely revealed. These divinely revealed mystery truths that will literally turn the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers. Exactly so. So in order for the bride to go up in the rapture at the last trump, she must first be part of the shout and the voice as the process of the rapture. We must first be taken up higher so that we can be shown things that we have never seen before. So that we can be shown, amen, uh, uh, and that is now that things that are to come. And so from Revelation 4 to Revelation 19, that is what's being shown to us now at this time under this message. So if you are sitting in a church that the only preaching is a good denominational living standards, then that is not going to prepare you to receive faith because it is the mystery truths revealed to you that will literally do it. We should teach good living standards. I am not saying that you don't preach good wholesome living standards. But that will come with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That will come with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But good living is just 
Good living. The rich young ruler lived good. He he was he, he lived had good moral standards. But he didn't follow Jesus. In other words, he wasn't obedient to the word. The Bible in Matthew talks about those ten virgins, five having oil in their lamps. All had lamps, but five had oil in their lamps, and the other five didn't. So good moral living standards is just having the lamp. It's just having the lamp. Because, see, when you get the oil in your lamp, what does it do? It will light a path in the darkness that you can see. See, the Holy Ghost in you would do what? It would lead you and guide you into all truth. You can't have the Holy Ghost and buck the word of God. Now you can have a good feeling because the rain falls on the just as well as the young just. You can speak in tongues and have dreams and visions and shout and go to church and have a wonderful time and feel, and, 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 feel, and I mean, just have a ball just Worship in the rain. Rain is coming down. Everybody is just worshiping. But what is it quickening? What is it quickening on the inside? Is the word life growing in you? Are you hungering? That little lily is hungering for life. It is pressing up through all of the darkness, reaching to the sun. Amen. It come, it shoots up a little spurt and maybe one or two little leaves. Amen. But it's getting its, it's, 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 it's rays from the sun and the rain falls on it. And as it just wants more and more and more. But the weed does the same thing. But what is it? Is it? Are you producing fruit? Are you growing and producing fruit? Amen. The seed that was planted. <clears throat> Amen. There's, there's, let, let me put it this way. There's only one form of eternal life. Amen. And that seed, amen, is, was, 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 was God himself. Zoe, his own life. That is the spirit that must be in you. And that seed, amen, would do what? Lead you and guide you into all truth. Let me go on, because we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna break into the, to a little bit more of this. Time is getting away from me already. Exodus 19. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. 19:4. Exodus 19:4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you into myself. So we see this eagle anointing was even back there, amen, with Moses. He told him, I bared you up on eagles' wings and brought you out of what? Dead conditions of bondage out of Egypt, where into the light of a new land. Amen. 
That's what's going on today. Amen. Let's see here. I want to skip down a little bit for the sake of time. And they heard a voice of God. Read from Genesis uh, 3.8. And they heard the voice of God, Lord, walking in the garden in the cool of the evening, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. We see that Eve, amen, saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eye. Here we go again, pleasant to the eye. And the tree uh, was to be desired to make one wise. So what did Eve do? Eve took education and man's thinking over the word of God. So when, when this happens, what did it do? We see that it broke fellowship with God. It broke fellowship with God. In the beginning, man and a woman and woman listened to each other. To uh, 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 there was there was there was a union. There was an order. Amen. In the garden, there was no strife. There was no arguing. There was no bickering. There was it was it was it was peaceful. But we see what happened is she began to listen to another voice apart from the word of God. They hearkened to a voice that conveyed an idea that actually sounded quite reasonable. Quite reasonable. The problem was the idea was contrary to God's word. This is why. We had to have, in this age, a restoration. This is why we had to have, amen, an eagle anointed in this age that will take us and raise us above, amen, the nonsense. Amen. That is being, brother, 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 precious brother Kwaku said Sunday, that we must be in tune. Now, when, when, when tuning a radio, we all know, if you're looking for a specific station and you may not know the call numbers or whatever, you go up and down the, up and down the dial, you're turning the dial, and you hear all kinds of voices One may sound real good, and you, it may catch your attention, and you stop just for a little bit. Nine times out of ten, if you stop for a little while and begin to listen, you're going to leave it there. That's what Eve did. She stopped, and she listened just for a little while, and it began to sound good to her. Now it began to sound good to her. She began to receive, amen, the anointing that it was projecting, the spirit that it was projecting. And what did it do? It planted a seed that altered her thinking. Contrary to God's word. And by this, my brothers and sisters, what did it do? We see this was the beginning of the fall, amen, that caused them to break fellowship, to lose fellowship with God. Notice carefully here. Eve had received what seemed to be a higher education to that of the word. Education is all right. Science is all right, but you can't put it above the word of God. That is that tree of knowledge and good and evil. I read earlier, Eve took of that tree 
by her receiving into her thinking her mind and then there was a seed of discrepancy to the word planted that caused her to go contrary. And the ultimate end was what? They began to realize the shame of their nakedness. The shame of their nakedness. See, before then, they had a veil that they didn't, they didn't see it because there was no shame in it. There was no shame. So they didn't even realize. <coughs> Revelation 3. Amen. Amen. 17, because thou sayest that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor. Now look at this. And blind and naked. This is This lady of seeing church age. This is not the bride. Why? Because the bride of Jesus Christ has received, amen, what has taken place, amen, in the sea. She is, she is, she is up under an eagle anointing. So up under that eagle anointing, what is happening under that eagle anointing? There's a counseling going on. Revelation 3.18, he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Now, see, in, Revel in, in the Lady of Sin, they, 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 they're rich with what? Rich with goods and have need of nothing. But you see here, there's another group that he's talking about here in Revelation in, in, in the 18th verse. That is being counseled, amen, buy me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment. Oh, my. It's a whole different kind of rich. That thou mayest be clothed. No longer really lie that, that, that clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eyesalve that thou mayest, mayest see. Amen. So the anointing of the eyesalve is what? That eagle anointing. Being under that eagle anointing, which is what? A special teaching to do what? To produce a rapturing faith. But we see that when that happens, that rapturing faith, that, 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 that carcass, that food, amen, at this time is being put out and the eagles, amen, are hungry, thirsty, amen, commanded to eat and be full, eat. Amen, because these literal truths are, is what's going to literally change your body. But what's happening? There's an invasion of locusts to divide the people, to separate them, to interrupt what God is doing. But he can't. Because of the teaching of the message. We're not blind to his tricks anymore. Why? Because we have an eagle anointing. We are under a prophetic anointing. 
Amen. We know that the people sometimes can disagree with one another. Just like I was talking about, sometimes when people disagree with one another, what does it do? It breaks their fellowship. It breaks their association. They can no longer walk together. Because to truly be in fellowship and in oneness with someone who have been first, you must first be in a union, in an agreement. An agreement is a spiritual thing of your thoughts and someone else's thoughts being in the same way of thinking and reasoning. Amen. One of the hardest things in this world is for people to agree on anything. Everybody has an opinion. But we have an absolute. There is an absolute. You want to know what it is? Love the Lord with all your heart. Says, lean not into your own understanding. Don't fall out with people. That's the locust. We're supposed to be producing fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, kindness. In spite of what the locusts are doing. Why? Because they can't touch the bride. We'll get into that. It's in Re Revelation 9. As I said before, Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together except they agree? Walking together is symbolic of being in agreement. Genesis 5.22, Enoch walked with God. After he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch was 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Hmm. Walking with God translates you from mortal to immortality. I'm going to say that again. When you walk with God, it changes you. When you walk with God, it elevates you. The more you walk with God, the more you rise above the thinking of this world. The more you walk with God, you rise above the thinking of denominational creeds and dogmas. Why? Because you're in fellowship with the very life of God, Zoe. You're in fellowship. Enoch is a type of us in this age. Remember, he said, I read there in the Lady of Sin, said, uh, 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 that the bride will go up before any tribulation. But what's happening here is there's a revelation going on, amen, of, of what has, has happened, what is happening, and what's to come. See, to do what? Produce a rapturing faith. That's what these seals is literally turning our hearts. Amen. So Enoch typed but, but, but before Noah and the judgment of the flood, Enoch walked with God and received the body chain. When Eve agreed with the serpent 
and disagreed with the word of God, then that is what broke fellowship between God and man at the beginning. So it would have to take man to come back into full agreement with the thought and mind of God in order to restore fellowship of what man lost in the garden. A perfect oneness. Turn to the message, if you will, God's perfecting church, 1954, December 4. Preach December 4 in 1954. Paragraph 24. This is all about relationship of man being restored back with God again by the means of being restored to the correct thinking of the word. This is that eagle anointing to rise above that's lifting us up into heavenly places. Amen. Notice you have those four beasts, the eagle being the, ox, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. Notice the eagle is the only one of those that is able to take flight. All the other three are all earthbound. That eagle is the only one that is able to, 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 to fly above, amen, and see far. Amen. It says here, 24th chapter, Amen. Now notice here, just a little farther as he went on, God making himself known through fatherhood, through sonship, and through the Holy Spirit. Now see, he brought into himself a blood cell, wrapped himself into this, broke forth a blood at Calvary, throwed out his blood that he might bring through this blood cleansing by the same atonement, taking every sinner and cleanse him, bring him into a fellowship that he can talk with man. Walk with man like he did in the Garden of Eden before sin ever come on the earth. And our relationship is restored to Jehovah through the offering of his son, the Lord Jesus. This is all about relationship of man being restored back to God. As I said Sunday, I made the statement, and I had this already in my notes. The three things that man lost when he left Eden. He lost eternal life. That had to be purchased. He lost fellowship with God. That had to be restored. And he lost Dominion over the earth. So we see the cleansing restored partial fellowship. It was God, it was Emmanuel, God with man. When Christ, amen, took a blood cell, wrapped himself in a blood cell, created a body, amen, he was able to walk once again, with man, with man. But it wasn't until, amen, Calvary, 
and the resurrection and then those 120 receiving the Holy Ghost that he became God in man. So what now? It was that seed being planted into that earth again to produce what? That tree. To begin, amen, uh, uh, that tree began to sprout new wings, new, new, new life once again. So that at the harvest time, amen, it's no longer just Adam. It's no longer just Eve. But it's a gathered church in a many-membered body, amen, all producing fruit. What is in fruit? Seed to re reproduce the word again. In that fruit is seed. So what does that mean? That in you, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have dominion, the potential, the power lies within you to produce once again. The, 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 the power, amen, lies within you, amen, to be amateur gods upon the earth. God in man. Amen. These things, this level of thinking comes by a prophetic anointing. So when within uh, you, so when within you, you disbelieve God's word, the very core of what you are as a spirit and soul is separated from God and fellowship. By you and God being different in your spirit of agreement and everything that disagrees with God becomes separated in fellowship from God. And anything that's separated dies. Dominion over the earth, that was what Adam and Eve to have full control over the earth, over all nature, over bird, over the animal life, over the fish life, over the botany life, over the wind, over the weather. There was no death anywhere. Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish to see over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. So back to Revelation 3.18. I counsel thee to buy me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. They became naked in Genesis. But here the Lord is telling us, how to be clothed again. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve so that we can see. In Genesis Eve, eyes of, of understanding were opened by obedience to a false word of the serpent. Her eyes was open to a false word, which caused what? For her to realize that she was naked. There was a shame attached to her nakedness. Cause here to become naked, but is how in Revelation 3 we find that the church eyes are being opened, being by the atonement, and that is what closes her again. We want to look at how we are to have the right spirit 
within us in this hour. We can be obedient to the word of God because there is a great power that is released by God when a person comes in full obedience to the word of God. In the message, Blind Bartimaeus, 1954, 04-02, 1954-04-02, 04-02. While she's finding that, I want to move on. It says, but to continue in obedience to the word requires a spirit of obedience. To first be in the person. There must first be a spirit of obedience. There is a spirit associated with obedience to God's word just as there is a spirit that causes a person to obey what the devil wants them to. There is a spirit associated with disobedience, just as there is a spirit associated with obedience. Either way, depending on what spirit is in you, you will be obedient to something. Eve obeyed the serpent because something that changed within her spirit. You are going to listen to somebody. People so often say, well, why do you listen? Why do you do it? Everybody is listening to somebody. It's just you have to be in tune with the right voice. But what's the right voice? That's the question. To be obedient with the wrong voice in this hour will cause you some trouble. But you must be in obedience to the voice of God, to the word of God. There is your absolute, God's word. Let me continue. I'm not going to be before you much longer. Where when in t- Ephesians 2, 2 says, Where in, in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the powers of the air. The first... The, the, I'm sorry, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. There is where the spirit in the people that cause them to be disobedient to God's word. And so there must be a spirit in this hour, in the believer that causes him or her to come back into the obedience of the word again. If this same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies as Enoch walked with God. In fellowship with God, he was changed. There was a change going taking place as he was walking in the right spirit, as he was walking in obedience to God. And he was he received a body change. He was no more. So today, as we're walking. In the revealed light of the gospel of this time, of this age. Amen. We are being changed. Amen. As we as we fellowship with God, as we fellowship, amen. 
The word of God is returning us back into a complete fellowship. So that we are literally being changed. Amen. As the word of God, amen, is changing us as we walk in complete fellowship with God. It's not going to just happen all of a sudden because you want it to. There must be a sacrifice. There must be a dying out. There must be a Calvary. There must be a, a, a Calvary of, of your old denominational thinking. There must be a Calvary, amen, of your own will. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. There must be a dying out to your own intellectual thinking. Amen. And you must submit yourself. Amen. To the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. There is where the change is going to take place. In this hour, it takes an eagle anointing. Not a man anointing. Not an ox anointing. Not a lion anointing. It's going to take an eagle anointing, a prophetic anointing to produce the faith that it's going to take in this hour. But we see in contrast everything that God is doing, everything that he's promised in this hour, that there at this time, an invasion from the bottomless pit. These demon powers that is coming against the bride where everything is saying that she should be gathering together around the caucus, gathering together and worship around the word, coming together in fellowship with one another and in a perfect union with our God we see that these demon powers are dividing, tearing down everything that he's doing. But Job said, he said, I will restore. I will restore. I want to read this last in closing. I won't be able to get through this. Not even close. I'm sorry. In 1 Samuel 15, 17 chapter. I'm sorry, let me do this first. Romans. Romans 5, 19. Then after that, go to 1 Samuel 15. Start at the 17th verse. Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Look at how powerful obedience to the word of God is. Also, look at how powerful disobedience can be. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by obedience of one shall many be made righteous obedience to the word. What did the serpent offer? Creed, dogmas. It, 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 it offered good things. It, 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 it offered soup supples and Women's Day, Men's Day, family and friends. No, I got, I got no problem with all of these things. If you're coming together around the revealed truth. But what happened is we had to come up with all of these gimmicks 
and different things because the word don't excite the people no more. Just the word of God don't excite the people no more. Why don't the word tell me why the word don't excite the people no more? Because it's not an eagle anointing. Where the caucus is, the eagles will be gathered together. Now, I'm not saying that you don't feel rain, like I said before. They all, we all, the, 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 the weed, the wheat, everything feels the rain. But there has to be a prophetic anointing for you to be able to see. Your eye of understanding is open. That will literally give you a faith for what is taking place in this hour. Samuel, the first 15th chapter. Samuel said, when thou was a little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed the king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. And fight against them until they were until they be consumed. Before then didst thou not wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoils, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said to Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice. Of the Lord. <coughs> and have gone the way which the Lord has sent me. And have brought Agai, the king of Amalekite, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoils, sheep, oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. <laughs> and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? The Lord has great delight in a burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, it is better. To obey is better than a sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Amen. And you know, we are considered as kings and priests. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice and disobeyed the voice of God. Last quote, in closing. Go to the token, 1963, 0901. 0901, uh, paragraph 338. Then I want you to go to the token again, preached in 1964, 0208. You see, when you choose to obey the word of God, when you choose, to obey the word of God, then that is what brings the spirit of the word into you. When you choose to obey the word of God, 
That is what brings the spirit of the word into you. And then that causes you to continue in obedience. The token preached 1963, September 1st. The token is the sign that the purchase has been made and been accepted. It, the purchase have been made and accepted. Now, you can't get the token from the railroad fare until you pay the price. Now, the price has been paid for us. And the only way you're going to pay the price is pay it. Amen. That's right. He says, uh, believe it, accept it, Full obedience to the word of God will entitle you to the token. Full obedience, not part as it, not part of it as far as your denomination goes, but all of it. Full obedience to the word, which is Christ, which is Christ, brings you into Christ. Full obedience to the word of God will entitle you to the token. Not part, not your denomination, as far as your denomination goes. Full obedience to the word, which is Christ, brings you into Christ. Amen. The token preached again in 1964. February 8th reads on this wise, full obedience to the word brings God, the word eternal in you. And that is the token. When the word is in you, it's Christ in you. Full obedience. Amen. To the word is Christ in you. Amen. I have a few more here, but I'm not going to go in, go on any further. Amen. Our time has gotten away from us. Amen. Uh, so we see in closing that. Amen. We, 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 we're trying to show you that the obedience to the word in this hour, amen, is the very thing, amen, that's going to bring Revelation 3.18 into manifestation to anoint thine eyes with eyesight. Talking earlier about those 10 virgins, they go out to meet the bridegroom. What is this? This is the rapture. So five have their, their lamps, and their lamps are lit because they have oil in their lamps. Amen. They, they had enough oil in their lamps for the journey. The other five, they, they had no more oil. So they stumbled in the darkness. So they went to the other five, amen, to ask for oil. And they say, go to them that sail. So who did they have to go to? Amen. Revelation 3. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. See, they had to go back to him to get the oil. I counsel thee to buy of me. Amen. So we see that 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 
they're, they're, they're in, 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 in closing, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm finna close for real on this time. Getting ready to close. There were three exodus. There's an exodus there in, the, in, the, in, 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 in Moses' day that called them out, amen, of, of bondage. There was a, they, they, was, they was in bondage there, and an and, 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 and angel, amen, an angel came to Moses and sent him, amen, to, 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 to bring, lead the people out of bondage. Amen. To lead them out of bondage and bring them to a place that he, that was prepared just for them. Amen. And there was a mixed multitude that came out. Everybody wasn't obedient. Everybody didn't hearken unto the voice of the messenger that the angel sent to bring them out of bondage. And what happened? They died in the wilderness. The second exodus in this day, amen, that this very message, this eagle anointing is what? To resurrect you, to bring you out of bondage once again. You're in a bondage of old denominational idealism amen where you 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 you're in bondage of of of, of false thinking just like false a uh, uh, false thinking and disobedience to the word of god the uh, uh, eve uh, broke fellowship Amen. So to be, uh, uh, to break, break fellowship is to be in the bondage by another spirit. So this, in this hour, this second exodus, amen, by a prophetic anointing is to anoint your eyes with eyesal, amen, to see, to bring you out of, the, uh, out of bondage of an old denominational thinking into a land, amen, which he has prepared for you, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, that will raise you up, amen, and, and elevate your thinking to prepare you for a rapture. And the third exodus is that when you are changed out of this old pest house of flesh into a new body, amen, out of the bondage of this body, amen, that, that is going to go back to the dust of the earth. This body that gets sick, this body that feels tiredness, this body that feels pain, this body that feels depression, this body that feels all of those kinds of things, amen, into a new body, amen, into a new body that he has prepared for you. Remember I said a body thou has prepared for you. Amen. A perfect body. But in order to come into a perfect body, you must receive a perfect thinking, a perfect revelation, amen, a new way of thinking. And what does that? What did it back then? The angel sent the messenger to the children of Israel to lead them out. A prophetic anointing led them to the promised land. And today, it's the same thing. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Amen. Um, maybe I'll get a chance to expound on this a little further another time. Amen. I trust that you were enlightened. Amen. By the word of God. Trust that something was said. Amen. To cause you to maybe just dig in the scriptures a little bit. I trust something was said. Amen. That tugged at your heart. Amen. That want to, amen, look into the deep things of God. Amen.
we're not just talking about a good standard of living. I mean, that's that's part of it. The Holy Spirit will make you live right. Will make you live above uh, uh, all of the foolishness. Amen. Will change you. Amen. That's sanctification. But under the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he will lead you and guide you into the truth of the gospel. That you'll not be deceived. But you must first receive the spirit of obedience. Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for this hour. Lord God, the things, Lord, that you have done for us or you've provided for us in this day, Lord God, to bring us into this marvelous light. Amen. That we uh, 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 can see afar, that we are settled, that we have found, Lord, a resting place. That, 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 that we have spotted, amen, the light in the distance, O oh Father God, that guides us to a, a haven of rest in this stormy times, Lord God, of as we navigate through these troublesome times, Lord God, the light of your word that leads us, Lord, into a place where we have a tie post. And as the storms of, of, of this life, Lord, as the storms of this time, the seas and the billows roll, Lord, may we be tied to the tie post in this hour, Lord, that we not be tossed about by every sound and wind and doctrine, that the word of God will stabilize us, Lord God, Give us an understanding, O oh Father God, of the word in this hour. Give us an understanding of your will, your way, Lord God. That shine a light, O oh Father God, of truth, Lord, to give us evening time faith for an evening time rapture, Lord. We ask these blessings, O oh Lord God. Anoint those, Lord God, the hearers of the word. Lord God, may it sink down into their very soul into their hearts, Lord God, to realize that, that we, are, we are in the time of the rapture, that we are potentially in a resurrection right now. Lord God, bless us not to fall asleep in this hour, not to slumber, Lord, not to let our oils be empty of, our lamps be empty of oil, oh Lord God. But let us come together, Lord God, even more, Father God. The main thing, Lord, is that we have a fellowship with you. Lord God, may we take that time, Lord God, as Brother Kweku put it on this, week, this weekend, Lord Father God, to just take time and, 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 and shut in with God. Make sure that we're in tune with what you're doing in this hour. That we're in tune to the right station. That we're in tune with you, Lord God. It's so easy to be on the wrong channel, traveling the wrong way, listening to the wrong thing, hearkening to the wrong voice, Lord. For there's so many voices in this hour. But Lord God, you have, Lord God, chosen us and placed a seal, O oh Father, that we will not be deceived. In Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God. Amen. 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 We like to just say on this day, uh, I guess on tomorrow, the 10th, I'm sure she's listening. Um, happy birthday uh, to my mother-in-law, Sister Dixon. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Amen. Uh, this upcoming service, a virtual service, will continue on Sunday, amen, at 1030 uh, via Periscope and Facebook. Periscope uh, is Spirit and Truth Tabernacle. Facebook is SAT Tabernacle, amen. Uh, our giving, 
Again, it's at spiritandtruthtabernacle.org um, or through the My Church app, PayPal, or Cash App. We would like to just thank everyone for, amen, being obedient, amen, to the Spirit as it moves you, amen, to, uh, amen, to help us in the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Amen. When donating, please choose the option to transfer or send to a friend. This will minimize or eliminate any PayPal fees. The site or the address is giving at john423.org without any spaces. Amen. Cash App is dollar sign Spirit and Truth T. And our address here is 3951 Haverhill Road. Suite 109, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33417, if you would like to mail anything. Amen. Let us pray over our giving. Most gracious Father, Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for those that, Lord God, uh, have sold into, Lord, this ministry, oh, Father God. Lord God, may they receive, Lord God, a just reward, oh, Lord God. May you return it unto them a hundredfold. Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray, Father. Anoint us, O oh Father God, to uh, have wisdom on, on the use, O oh Father God, and the uh, stewardships over the money that, that, that you've allowed us to have, O oh Father God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you.